welcome to episode four of um, D&D Brief, um, the show where we talk about um, what just happened in our D&D session. Um, and I pad out content for two weeks. Uh, <laughs> I'm here with I'm here with my beautiful, my beautiful, beautiful D&D um, compatriots um, who I've just left on. I've just really sneakily left on a huge cliffhanger. Um, we have Jace. Hi. We have Katie Chaos. Hey, hey. We have Crispy. Hello. And we have Katie Anna. Katie, we have Katie Anna. Hello. Hello. Yeah, she did. <laughs> okay. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, we are um talking um we're talking about the episode that we just we just did today, and um I I got you all um pretty. It was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it with with the exception of the um, bloody camera issues and stuff like that. I um I enjoyed it. We're doing um so I've gone a little tiny bit off book, a little a little tiny bit off book in a with a with an intention of creating like an overall arcing cohesive narrative as opposed to giving you as opposed to going look, these are really really small um individual episodes that you this is the only thing um that there, there's going to be this is the only um there's there's no other di- uh, there's no difference in the things that you're doing i wanted to give you um like this overarching thing so i i found a discord for candlekeep mysteries <laughs> and that get, discord has got a lot of really cool ideas so um in in the four weeks that we've had off i was like okay i can build now i can fully build this um universe to be a little bit more cohesive as opposed to just being um a small like small uh, like small single ep- episodic things well, well they can still be episodic things um but there is like a an umbrella to it now which i feel a lot more comfortable with it because it gives you guys something to get your teeth into too mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Uh, when I I was kind of wondering because I was like, hmm, the aesthetic of these different maps is very different, which means they're probably not all in the same chapter in the book. So some <laughs> things, um, there was some things that roll twenty, roll twenty is amazing, and um, the the candle keep that it's given that it's given is um gives the key areas. But if you want to pad something out or give you, if you're journeying a, a long way, for example, in like if you're journeying from um, Candlekeep to somewhere northeast of Baldur's Gate, it's a bit of a trek. It's not like you're not going to take multiple rests. And then if you're following mm. something else, rather than just giving you giving you nothing and if i if i've placed something in um in the troll peak mountains or something along those lines or or in the troll peak Mm -hmm. district you're damn fucking right i'm gonna give you a troll (laughs) you know there's gonna be there's gonna be a troll it's 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 in the name you've got to get a you've got to get a troll and if there's not a map there i'm either gonna use dungeon painter studio to make one or in this case find a free one on facebook (laughs) Mm-hmm. There's loads on Reddit as well. Like that's a the thing. It's like when you when because I did that when when I was running a campaign, I was like, well, I need that. Um, there isn't it in Roll Twenty, and um, you just Google the campaign name, and then somebody has made a map, and that yeah. if you can use it, so. Yeah, as long as as long as they they are happy for it to um, it to be used and everything sort of like says, yep, you can use this for campaigns or anything on those lines. I'm like, or like for um, on stream and things on, on produced content. I'm like, yep, then I'm gonna I'm gonna like use some of those things. The um, the bedroom in episode in episode one in book one mm-hmm. that I made in Dungeon Painted Studio, which is very fun. That's a very, it's a very fun piece of kit. I've used that for like a lot of stuff. It's Dungeon Painting Studio. But today I was like, oh no shit, I still need a map for that. I'll just do some Googling <laughs> and try and find something. Um, so spooky place, no more magic. Someone's like messing with stuff. How you feeling? How you feeling, gang? You know what? Somebody in chat, I think, put it's some of the some of the graphics on the picture had a raven lofty feel about it, which I think it really did. <laughs> I feel like I feel like 
because we, you're talking about um, the um, uh, Vistani as well, um, you, mm. you're, you're automatically those of you who are um, who are fully like aware of D and of, of like the D and D mm. law and how the, the relationships with those. I I feel like it's it's heavily hinted at that um, that book that gets snatched away the 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 book that gets snatched away um, is stra- is snatched away by someone someone who's a little bit. A little bit bloody, one might say. Um, a little bit of a sanguine expert, one might one might assume. One might assume, darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, like first and foremost, um level three is wild. I don't know what you're talking about. What the fuck? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I have gained no new abilities. That, uh, <laughs> you, like you forget, you forget with fighters because I, I always like stare, stay chaos fighters because I think they're boring, and then suddenly you're twice the size. <laughs> you, know, you know, I felt exactly the same until I played Baldur's Gate, and bearing in mind that, like, um, and obviously, and you know that I'm a massive critical role fan and i've watched like orim uh and liam o'brien play a fighter for that time and i've still thought oh, a bit boring played Baldur's gate when you've got lazelle in your party i'm like holy shit fighter might be the way forward next time yeah, <laughs> yeah. like because you've got mm. all those different actions and it's been a, and also we're just looking at barbarian as well because it's been a long time since i played a barbarian and i was like I really like a barbarian too. They're pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. They've got so much shit behind them that they can throw at the wall and, and see if it sticks. Yeah. So, like, I mean, it, it, I've, obviously, it's rune class that Jace's playing is just bonkers. But, um, <laughs> and, I've, and I've never played ends. a fighter before. Like, I've never played a fighter before. And I was just like, I'm going to go weird right from the start. Yeah, I love no it. Way. If you go to a weird, go funky. Yeah, you you messaged me about it um, while I was um, while I was away at a convention, and I was like, I was reading reading through what you were saying. I was like, I'm just gonna trust him. I'm gonna <laughs> trust him that it's fine. Um, that he's he's read everything about it, and um, yeah. it, it it it'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. Um, but we also have we also have a, a a swashbuckler that is coming up in the ranks. We have. <laughs> We have Azimar abilities that are so suddenly there's wings, and then we've got um, a ranger with Colossus Slayer, which um, is my favorite of of the rangers. But be- because, especially if you're going archery with a range with a ranger with archery with a hunter, I just think it's so. It's so good to be able to go. Oh, oh, they're missing the hit points. Oh, that's another D eight. Okay, bye. Extra damage is always nice. And I did eight is wild. It's like it's I didn't, proper wild. I, I have a I have a um a hunter ranger in a in a campaign that I'm playing and I didn't realise I picked I read through them and I, I went, no, because she hates giants. I want her to be the I want her to not be the Colossus one. I want her to be the giant. I think it's giant something or other, but it's the next one down. And it's all about when a when um so a large creature takes an opportunity attack, you can use your re- reaction to hit it back. And have I used that ability ever? Have I fuck? <laughs> because I'm an archer, so I'm 30 yeah. miles away. Um yeah, no. at Archer Tabaxi, 30 miles away, not getting hit by anything. And if I do get hit by something, it's the same size as me, so I can't use it. And I really wanted like like when I was talking to the different things that you could do with Crispy, I just wanted to say, just take Colossus Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that's exactly what your DM sounded like. So I was like, yeah, we'll do that. My, my DMs when you can do, you can do literally, these are the, the options. Pick what you want, but the obvious choice is Colossus Slayer. <laughs> very, <laughs> very, um, very pointedly going, make sure that you do this because it's very, it's, um, otherwise you're going to never use it. But you might have done, you may have done because the, um, the, the bigger um, troll, hit, if the bigger troll had hit you, you could have hit it back. But in never did because you were being an archer and being miles away so my point stands the thing is i think you can build rangers really well because you've got like the opportunity later on in the game um as you're going through your aso improvements to take shop to you as well so you can literally be at the arse end of nowhere and be going i've just got this 300 yeah. feet away yeah no problem no biggie yeah take 
<laughs> out hunter's mark there's an extra six you know, like. <laughs> it's great it really is great it really 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 is great um it it um in answer to um Kremen's question about whether it's still a milestone level up yeah when we get to the there are still going to be very very clear book sized chapters so you're currently on the book of the raven aptly named as you can well imagine it's a, this is a book of the raven um and this is um you i mean no one is surprised um but when you when we finish the book of the raven that is when we will move on to level four and level four is one of my favorite let the the what the book that i've chosen for level four is one of my favorites and i cannot wait for um wait to play it with you um i think it's gonna be really really fun um this one this one um is is and it's another one where the, they, they they every so far they all feel really like left of center like nothing mm. feels exactly the same um and that's been that's been really fun and really challenging from like a dm perspective uh, as well yeah. um to try and make it feel cohesive how how are you how are you like i'm going to put you all on the spot are you enjoying it <laughs> yeah it's been really varied and it's i know it's, it's great I mean, the whole tone between each each episode has been quite massively different. But yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, mm. I mean, I am yeah. genuinely here fishing for compliments right now. So, <laughs> by all means, yeah, no, it's it's great. It's the best campaign really awesome. I've ever played. Thanks, Crispy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I think when you have like one super long campaign, like it can run the risk of starting to get monotone yeah like, like some dms are really good at keeping it interesting while having like one just very focused like overarching storyline goal but like sometimes it's not everyone is good at like keeping it interesting and this one this campaign is i like how it's just like no it's just shifting gears like every couple of sessions it's just like okay we're like we're in a new episode of tv basically like um yeah very like i like the the episodic nature and i like the fact it's it's also it feels like it's really stretching stretching me as well which i really like i i love getting extra strings to to bows and um stuff like that um but you met my aracocra today which i was really worried about um because <laughs> because i love them they're my favorite um they they have lots of like little little bits and things that i've thought of for them so did we establish what that red tabard like what you didn't was... you didn't establish what it was or what it represented or or really notice you didn't even um like make any checks with regard to the coins that they gave you so you didn't you hadn't made any anything with i that. just i literally just vote wrote in my bio on d on um D20, on roll 20 um mithril mithril um, feathered coin that's all I, I wrote so i know i've got it in my stash but sure, sure. i just had to resist the urge to caught the bird person because that's <laughs> like, it's always my urge to go Cot! jonathan it's jonathan <laughs> but in in non-binary verb form <laughs> um i want to i want to ask a question um about past trauma <laughs> <laughs> I, I need i need to like i'm going to pretend that i don't know this story because i was also the dm for this but i need to know your story of past trauma with um crossing bridges or crossing rivers okay oh, once upon a time once upon a time once upon a time we were playing dungeons and dragons in real life with people and we were playing a campaign i don't even know what it was but we were at, we were playing a campaign and we were with a fella that we hadn't played a lot of D D be with before hadn't known him for particularly very long either um but he'd been playing since like the 70s so he was but um i'll i'll finish do the end of the story now because like now speak speaking to him now he's very much in a um the sessions of Dungeons and Dragons that I played with you lot has changed the way that I want to play Dungeons and Dragons moving forward. So it's a it's a happy ending. But um, so we were trying to cross this river to save us the pain of walking to the bridge. So we decided to make this raft and try and get us across this river. And we were shooting arrows across to try and set up some sort of, of rope that we could drag ourselves across. There was dimension dooring involved and misty step. I think misty steps. I think were happening to, and. Like we'd miss you step into the river and then immediately we pulled under the river and then somebody would have you'd have to miss you step back out again. And I think we spent rather than walking 
like the day two days i think it was well it wasn't even that long it was like a it would have been a two-day walk to go all the way around to the other side but we just thought we'd be able to do it in like half an hour just build a just get the wrap together go across the river that's going to take at least a day and a half off our journey what in actuality it did was add a like an hour and a half to the playtime when we did roll after roll after what roll. Even that many rolls. It, it, but it was just it was, they were like so four, stupid. There were four and rolls that went really badly. Really badly. And then, but we tried to like outplay the dice and be like, oh, we'll try this and we'll try this. And everything we tried just didn't work <laughs> to the point where right at the end, our, my friend turned around and said, did we get to cross the river or not? And <laughs> Claire turned around and said, not on the, not with those dice. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, no, this is how this is going to work. Um, so we ended up walking around anyway. But it was like an hour and a half of gameplay where we just dicked around going across its river. And it was the, trying to cross its river. And then we couldn't fucking do it anyway. So it was just, it was, it was nonsense. But it was proper, you know, like that minutia of stupid that you do in Dungeons and Dragons. It, it was one of those things. Idiots. It's one of those things where those, those sort of moments are some of my favourite moments in tabletop RPGs mm. because it, it's it's not like you're not on rails on those kind of things. Like you, you're choosing to do what you want to do and the dice are telling that story, the um, the the rules. And I wasn't, it wasn't like, I'm going to make you make a roll for like every, you, you're not it in it was, bullet it was, time it was, they were, like that. they were under like we're tying it together you're making this right right make me one roll for how well you do that how well you make that raft and that's a five you get, you get your most your couple of decks most decks with characters one of them's helping the other one they roll a four and a three and you're like well then you are fucked you go you put that raft in the river it separates and they all the separate parts of it go down the river individually you're like well Anyone got con- anyone got control water? We got part of the fucking river. Like, <laughs> it, <laughs> it was too. We were too young in the campaign. We didn't have access to that sort of spell. Yeah, so. you, were, you were babbies. You were babbies. It was it was early days, and it was um, it was it was fun. It was it was. It's one of those things that those are the kind of things, in my opinion, those are the kind of things that you talk about at the end of um end of a campaign. If you like, or at the end of a session, oh, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe, uh, I can't believe all of that, all of that happened. We did all of that, and it got us nowhere. Yeah, but we had fun. <laughs> it was, it was, it was fun. Apart from the one guy who was like, yeah, look, Claire, do we get across this or not? <laughs> yeah. But then, then it, like subsequently, when when I, I think because he was a child of the Dungeons and Dragons from the before times, like during the Satanic Panic and all of that malarkey. Um, but when he, you just had to play what, as quickly as possible and not have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and and he was he played previously with a load of people who weren't really heavily into the RP side of stuff. In and um, in by heavily in like weren't into it at all. I do this. I roll my dice. Does this work? Sort of uh, sort of thing. Um, whereas I th- I think the n- as D and D has evolved, it certainly changed into a way. Oh, this is what I want to do. This is what my my character sheet says I can do. What can I add with my m- or like? What my dice will s- say I can do this, but here, how can I make it? How can I give it some flavour? Yeah, and how can I make it feel like it's something that my character will strictly do, rather than it being. Um, being a strict you yeah. know and proficient in bridge in raft building you know yeah i think i th- i think it, that that's my preferred way of playing or like of dming is um with your guys input so if if something happens you guys need to you guys tell me how it happens and you tell me what these things look like because it's so it's so much more, it makes it so much more of a two-way street rather than, and saves my voice as well for one of another thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, that was, that was fun times. That was fun times. I'll never, I'll never forget that because part of me was like, oh, maybe, I, maybe it's me. Maybe I need to change my, my play style and be, be less. Are they? Are these rules going to make rules going to make a difference at all? And I never did. I'm really glad that I didn't because uh, it like, it's, it's so like, much fun. Uh, yeah, and I think that is the thing. It's like, um, and and it's a, a thing that I I saw on um uh a conversation about 
being a dm was um you don't let don't let it stifle the fun if there is a if there is a dark soul involved and it's and it's quite a fun prospect and you want to want to make it fun then let it be yeah. fun because otherwise like what's the point and and actually we we howled laughing about like at the time ta- well oh, well, some, of you. Us, <laughs> some of us laughed um at the time so like t- steering the conversation away i did try something i did try something very new today that I've, i haven't used before and i've seen other dms use um and i felt like it was a perfect perfect opportunity for me to do it um and that was the what you don't hear <laughs> so rude did you also like change the way my dice work so you could no. do that as no. well <laughs> no, you 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 just you just laid it out flat for me and gave me the well, opportunity. You're <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> as, as soon as you described one, like it was a really good use of as soon as you described it, I was like, oh my god, it's literally just classic troll under a bridge. <laughs> I it was um I saw I saw the the god that is a Bria Iyengar use it in mm-hmm. a session in um in a um the harry potter themed kids on bikes thing mm-hmm. um and she she says it's to, she says it's to um brennan and she says what you don't what you don't see is this because he didn't walk high <laughs> enough and he turns to her and he goes i don't see that <laughs> it's, it's so good that's such a good moment I love that. <laughs> and like I think it's a dick move. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I, it, it stuck with me and it stuck with me and I've wanted an opportunity to be able to use it for a really, really long time. And today, your bad roles facilitated that for me. So I want to say thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> thank, thank you for letting me fuck with you. It's always a pleasure. But we will, we will be back next week if you're listening to, well if you're listening to this on youtube we'll be back next week if you listen to this live on discord we'll be back in two weeks time with a fight with some kind of scarecrow looking motherfucker and may probably the conclusion to this chapter i would have thought um and then we'll see where we go and what happens go from then because we're definitely in spooky season and we've got a couple of spooky things coming up it's almost as if I planned it. I didn't plan it, but I'm really happy that it's worked out this way. But yeah, folks, that is the... Unless anyone else has anything else to add, you beautiful beans. I'm good. Perfect. Yeah, a lot of fun. Um, all good. I love you. Love you all very much. Thank you for thank you for letting me fuck with you on a Sunday afternoon. It makes my life happy. Um, I will, I will talk to you guys, um, you all later. And we will be back live doing more Dungeons and Dragons nonsense very, very soon. Okay, bye. 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 Bye Bye-bye.